Warning, in this video I'll pronounce GNOME like you're supposed to with a hard G. GNO, not NO. Yes, that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if I didn't get the dates completely wrong, GNOME 44 should release tomorrow, or it's probably already out by the time you're watching this. And while it's not a revolution or anything, it does go into a pretty interesting direction to finally address some issues people had with this desktop. So let's take a look at everything new you'll get once your distro gives you the update. And let's take a look at this brand new segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safings Portmaster. Portmaster is an all-in-one tool to easily take your privacy to the next level. And it's a tool I use myself on all of my Linux devices. Portmaster lets you automatically block all trackers and malware in every application you run on your computer. Not just your web browser, but everything you run. It's easy to use with defaults already in place that lets you just set it and forget it. But if you like to configure every rule and every app, you also can. Portmaster is completely free and open source and also free of charge, as it's funded by users that subscribe to the SPN, a super-powered VPN that gives you multiple identities for every connection of every application. So if you want to easily improve the privacy of your system, whatever the Linux distro you use or even on Windows, click the link in the description below and download the Portmaster for free. So let's begin with GNOME Shell, the desktop interface itself. The first big addition is support for background applications. GNOME doesn't have a system tray by default, and so apps that ran in the background without a window were always pretty annoying to use unless you added an extension. GNOME 44 moves to try and add support back for these applications without using a system tray. What you'll get now is a section in the quick settings menu called background apps. It will only appear if you have any of these apps running and it just lists what is currently open and lets you close these applications. And that's it. This is a good addition, but it won't replace your app indicators extension just yet. Because while it shows you what is running in the background, it doesn't let you interact with them at all. You don't get a context menu and you can't even raise a window for these apps by clicking on them. Tray icons usually let you perform actions by clicking on these little ugly buggers. And here you don't have that. And I really, truly hope that they can bring support for just clicking on a background app and opening it or right-clicking it or having a drop-down menu somewhere to have the same exact functionality as tray icons. Because these tray icons are horrible. They're disjointed, they're incoherent, their context menu never look the same. They have colors or symbolic icons. They just look awful and having something better integrated with the system would be awesome but those background apps as they are implemented right now are just not a replacement another change in the gnome shell is the quick settings they were introduced in gnome 43 and while they are very useful they were also incomplete which is what gnome 44 fixes first the bluetooth setting is now fully functional it lets you expand it and see all the devices you previously paired with and you can connect to them in one click. You won't see new devices that you never paired with, and you could already add that feature back with an extension, but it's good to have it natively. All quick settings toggles also received a bit of a UI lifting. Previously, the name of the toggle changed to reflect what it was connected to or the setting it was currently using. For example, the Wi-Fi toggle just had the name of the Wi-Fi network. Now, these toggles are split with two lines of text. The first one is the name of the feature, and the second one is the setting or the thing you're connected to. It's much better, much simpler to understand, and it even manages to look better with more text, so good. Other smaller changes include the ability to click on the speaker icon in the quick settings to mute or unmute your computer, and they also replace the icon for screenshots to better reflect what that feature does. The window manager slash compositor called Mutter also received a bunch of changes, like removing the legacy OpenGL driver support, dropping the final remnants of GTK3, adding an experimental option for enabling HDR modes, implementing the Wayland fractional scaling protocol, so fractional scaling can be native and not blurry, 
and generally improving Wayland compatibility all around. There is still no triple buffer optimization out of the box, which is something Ubuntu adds that makes GNOME way smoother without really increasing latency between a click or a movement and an action. And I don't understand why GNOME doesn't ship it by default just yet. I don't see any drawbacks to it, but it's not there. Now let's talk about applications. First is the file manager, Nautilus. It gained back the ability to expand folders in the list view, something it had lost in the move to GTK4, as there was just no time to re-implement that. So now it's a real list view that lets you navigate like in a directory tree, at least if you enable that in the preferences. You can also now right click on a tab and get new actions like closing all the currently open tabs, reopening a closed one and moving a tab to a new window. Something you could already do by dragging the tab out of the current window and you can still do that fortunately. Nautilus will also let you directly create an image file anywhere when you've copied an image from another app or when you have just taken a screenshot. The clipboard will be able to pick it up and paste it in the file manager as an image file. Another big change in file management is the image preview in the file picker. For the past 10 years or so, the basic file picker in GNOME did not let you see thumbnails for files, which sucked big time. Whatever it was that blocked this from being developed, it's now gone and you can finally have a grid of icons in the file picker so you can see which image looks like what before selecting it. And that seems like a ridiculous feature not to have, and it was, but now it's finally there. But I will not give the GNOME developers props for this because, come on, it's so basic. GNOME Web is also getting better with GNOME 44 as it's finally been ported to GTK4, which means it now looks like the other Libadvita apps on GNOME. It now uses a newer version of WebKit's GTK implementation with a new WebGL implementation and WebGL2 support and a bunch of performance improvements and bug fixes. And on the interface side of things, Epiphany now moved to the Libadvita About window. It lets you open the preferences by pressing Ctrl plus comma. You can duplicate a tab by middle clicking on the refresh button. And it now supposedly has access to the brand new tab grid that lets you see thumbnails for all your open tabs to access them in a more visual way. Although using the nightly version, I did not get that button. When I had more tabs than could fit in the window, I just got the usual overflow menu and not the visual tab grid. What I'm really waiting for though is finished support for web extensions, including ad blockers and tracker blockers, which are still not supported right now. Gnome software didn't see many changes this time around with just a new toggle to only display free and open source software and filter out the apps using a proprietary license. Gnome Console, the new simple terminal app introduced in the previous Gnome release, also got access to the visual tab grid to switch between tabs and it looks great. Gnome Weather gained a new smooth temperature curve and a flatter toolbar that merges with the Windows content. And GNOME Contacts now lets you share a contact by generating a QR code, so people can just scan it and add the contact to their contacts list. GNOME Maps gained back keyboard navigation in the search results, and they started work on a vector tile style that uses the GNOME color palette, so maps will look better than their default OpenStreetMap style once that style is finished. And finally, GNOME Boxes got a redesigned VM creation window that should be faster to use and easier to understand. Here again, nothing is absolutely revolutionary, but it's all quality of life changes and the porting work to GTK4 and Libadvita seems basically complete apart from GNOME boxes, which still looks like it's GTK3. So it means that developers are now free to focus on features and refinements and improvements for the next releases. And of course, the settings got a bunch of changes as well. First, it's not really a setting, but the lock screen got a redesign. Gone is the dark gray drab background of the user list. Now you get a nice blurred wallpaper in the background that reflects the wallpaper of the selected user. User icons are now much bigger, they're more visible and the font size of the clock is also bigger. It just looks better all in all, less clinical, less drab, it's, it's just prettier. The network panel in the settings got support for WireGuard VPNs, letting you toggle it on or off, letting you create, update or delete connections and peers. 
The Wi-Fi panel now lets you share Wi-Fi network passwords in the form of a QR code as well, to avoid giving away the password itself, or just to avoid having to type ultra-lengthy and complicated sequences of numbers and letters. The accessibility panel was also reorganized and split into multiple pages instead of having one long page of settings split into categories. They are still categorized by function like seeing, hearing, typing and the like and they gained a new option to disable the overlay scroll bars. So these scroll bars are always visible instead of appearing when you get close to them with your mouse. Something I'm sure that a lot of users that don't have a disability will also want to turn off. The mouse and the touchpad settings were completely redesigned with a better layout and better explanations of the various options. And some nice animations were added to explain the difference between natural scrolling and traditional scrolling or two finger scrolling or edge scrolling on a touchpad. You also finally get the option to disable mouse pointer acceleration. Again, something a lot of people have been asking for and now you can do it. Although it is named pointer assistance and they had to implement a small clickable tooltip to explain what it is, which makes it feel a little over-designed, to be honest. The About panel in the settings now shows the kernel version and the device firmware revision. The Sound panel was reorganized and has a new volume level window to let you change the volume of various applications individually, something that was already possible but was in line with the main audio settings page. The alert chooser has been redesigned as well, moving away from the split combo button, and the sound test window has been improved as well. So here it's just refinements all around and bringing a more coherent and visually interesting experience, but also adding a bunch of stuff that people were asking for. And that's the theme of this release. It's a refinement over GNOME 43. It polishes the various ideas that have been implemented in the previous release, and it tidies up the look and feel of the core apps by finishing the porting efforts to GTK4. But there's also an interesting direction, which is that GNOME seems to be adding back features that people have been asking for for years. Whether it's an equivalent to the notification tray, or at least the first steps towards one, it's mass acceleration, it's overlay scroll bars, it's thumbnails in the file picker, these things were in limbo for about 10 years, and now GNOME is finally adding them back. So it feels that they finally found their footing and they're now ready to basically answer the user's demands or at least select user demands. And I really like this direction. I don't want GNOME to turn into another KDE or even to have the breadth of options that Cinnamon has because that is not its purpose or its vision. But these small quality of life options were necessary and I'm glad they're now moving back to add these small touches here and there. So let's hope it's not a fluke and it actually reflects a will to better serve GNOME users by adding carefully considered and carefully designed options and features to the desktop. I would really like that. And I would really like to tell you about our sponsor. If your computer is due for a replacement and you plan to run Linux on it, stop looking at devices made by Windows manufacturers that might or might not run Linux well. You might have a ton of work to do to make them run just buy something from Tuxedo, from the link in the description below. They make laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. And their range is big enough that they should fit every price point and every need. And all their devices are openable, repairable, upgradable. They have plenty of customization options at purchase. And you know they will just run Linux really well because the hardware has been picked specifically for that. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it, just click the link in the description below and give Tuxedo devices a shot. They're really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can always click that dislike button and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links down there to help support it from PayPal, Patreon, YouTube membership, super thanks, there's something for everyone, so if you want to, you know where to go. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!